Hi everybody, I'm Jennifer Tryon and welcome to the Christmas Sew Along. I'm so excited to be doing this. If you've been following along on this Facebook page, you'll have noticed um, the stocking and advent calendar event. And we're doing it a little earlier than we normally do in North America because we are hoping lots of people are going to join us from the UK today also. Uh, it's a little bit later in the evening for them and earlier in the afternoon for us, but I'm hoping um, no matter what time you're joining in that you will be inspired to create something yourself for Christmas, whether it's this advent calendar, a stocking or anything else, you know, we're all about uh, making it yourself. So I want you to take a look at the cutest Sorry. hand sewn advent Easy. calendar. Now I'll tell you, yes, you're going to hand sew, well, machine sew. Um, I hope you could hand sew it if you don't have a machine. Um, all of these little pockets and you can see I confiscated <laughs> the rest of the Halloween candy. Uh, the kids didn't really know that. I was wondering where that went. <laughs> I got my, my husband behind the camera tonight. So thank you for rushing right home to film this for me. But the leftover Halloween candy I thought would make perfect little um, advent treats. And as you know, we're coming up on the 1st of December. So I told the kids I'd thrown all this out. So they'll be very, very happy uh, <laughs> when this goes up. Um, but and you can make it like easily too. Are we getting people joining in? Yeah, there's a whole bunch of Melissa and Diane. Oh, that's good. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Hi Diane. Lotto. So I want to know where everybody is joining in from because we're starting earlier in the day so that the people in the UK and across Europe um, can join us at a reasonable time, not one in the morning. Uh, so it's about 8 p.m. there, 3 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and if you're just joining in, we're sewing up these great advent calendars. And next week, same time, we're going to be sewing up the cutest little stockings. Aren't these just so adorable? And you can you can use them um, either way. Yeah, and there are Houston, a lot. Nova Scotia, Florida. Awesome. San Pedro, California. Wow, this is great. Okay, good. I'm glad. So, the kit, if you're interested in getting this kit, um, I had these on... HSN um, at the end of September and so I think they're now on sale on the HSN website hsn.com if you um, search for um, advent calendar it's the threaders uh, the threaders brand crafters companion brand um, advent calendar kit and I'm going to show you just how easy it comes together because you do not need to be an expert sewer um, to sew this because it's literally just straight lines. So I'm going to take you through it and show you. This is how it comes in a big panel like this. Pixie says she missed you. Oh, hi Pixie. I've missed you guys too. It's been a while. It's been a while, but we're getting back to our regular weekly sessions. Don't you worry. We're going to do these sew longs for the next two Wednesdays and then we're back to all kinds of different crafts. So you can see it comes in this big panel like this and there's, it actually opens way out. Let me show you. Go back up. Oh. Yeah. So this is what's going to get cut up. And this side actually is the base of your of your advent calendar. This is where all the pockets are going to get sewn to. So it comes in one big panel like that. And then it also comes with a half yard of this great, I like it because it's not traditional Christmas colors. I kind of think it looks really fun. It's about a half yard. Now this half of this is going to be your backing. And half of it is going to make up the squares that go on the back of these pockets because the pockets you can see here, you know, we've got nice seams. They're all perfectly, so you're not seeing the, the salvage or the back edge. They're all lined. So yes, that's a little bit of extra sewing. However, that's going to prevent your pockets from fraying. That's going to make it so that you can keep this year after year after year. So, and then it's also going to come with this batting. And now you can either make your advent calendar um, extra thick and use this, um, use a double layer, or you can cut it in half, use a single layer, and then you could use this for something else. I mean, why not? So I'd say go, this is a single layer because I always like to conserve. And I think it's just, <laughs> really. Oh, it's not cash or food. <laughs> okay. It's fabric. <laughs> Thanks for calling me out on that though. Um, yeah, that's my husband behind the camera, so you can see, you know. And Colleen's noticed your new iron. I know, look at this, you guys. I got a cordless, a cordless iron. And Tamara says hi. Hi, Tamara. So yeah, cordless iron, that's very thrilling. 
So I started on a few of these, open up the ironing pad. I'm gonna cut this in half because despite popular belief in this room, I do actually like to conserve fabric, not food or cash. So I'm cutting it in half because there's lots of things that you can make with quilt batting like this. Oven mitts, pot holders, a table, I could cut this down to a table runner. So I feel like that's a little extra bonus, um, you know, that you get. So why not save it? And I'm gonna show you how to cut these up. I'm just gonna move the machine over so I've got lots of cutting space. So there's, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do for sure is iron it. I mean, I would say at least 70% of sewing is actually pressing. I won't say ironing, because ironing just ticks people off. <laughs> like, will make them not wanna do it. But you'll, you'll notice your projects, you know, start to look much more professional and, you know, much more put together if they're well pressed. So give it a good iron before you start sewing and along the way. That's gonna make it A, much easier to cut, much easier to sew, your seams are gonna be straighter. Everything's just gonna look nicer. And then when anyone accuses you in life of never ironing, you can say, not true. In fact, my iron, I had to get a second iron. Not that I ever iron clothes. I was gonna say, <laughs> I'll keep my mouth shut. Yeah. Susan said she was just thinking about you today, wondering what you were up to. Oh, isn't that so sweet? Well, I'm so glad you joined in. And thank you, everyone, for your patience during this hiatus. I'd like to say I've just been, like, sipping, you know, rum punch on a beach somewhere. But I've been working, working, working hard behind the scenes. We went to Quilt Market in Houston, which was so, so fun. And, you know, a bit like the mothership for a sewer like me. Um, but any crafty types would have appreciated going there. It was really, really fun. And there's been lots of cool behind the scenes stuff happening at Crafter's Companion and for me. And so I appreciate you guys being patient with the, uh, with a bit of a break in the, in the lives, but it's good to know that you guys, I mean, you're into them <laughs> every week. Let me, let me ask everybody who's joined. How many people have we got going on now? Uh, 30 something. Okay. So let me know if later on in the evening is preferable. Leave a comment and let me know because this will be a good little uh, test to know whether or not you guys prefer like 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, or if you like the afternoon sessions. It'll be good for me to know. Somebody wanted to know what brand of iron that was. So this is a Panasonic um, uh, wireless iron. Is it wireless? Yeah, cordless. Cordless, I guess you would call it. All right, let me find my ruler. Just a second, it's over here somewhere. My big ruler. So if you don't have a cutting mat and rotary cutter, you can totally just cut this with scissors. Um, but hopefully when you see this, you'll see, okay, there is a benefit to cutting it this way because it's nice and straight. I need to get in here. And easy every time. You can probably just go right around there and then they'll see how it works. So basically you wanna line up your ruler with whatever straight edge, like I'm going with the straight edge here, but you would line it up with the straight lines on your mat typically. And just, and then that cuts it nice. And you know, if you were doing it with the scissors or if you were tearing it, it would fray, um, it wouldn't be as even. So this here becomes the base and we're just gonna set that aside for now. I won't uh, roll it up since I just ironed it. And then basically what you wanna do This comes folded in half, and you can see when you cut here, you only need half of this. You need half of it for the back. So you can see when you rip, it rips straight, but that's definitely not the nice edge that the rotary cut the rotary cutter would give you. Yeah. So I'm gonna set that aside too. That's gonna be for the very, very back of the calendar. And so that these things, so that the squares and the backs of the pockets, because remember, each pocket is lined like this. See? I'm gonna line these up. Actually, this needs a bit of a pressing too. Was this session supposed to be at nine o'clock originally? And then we got switched? Yeah, honestly, the times have been, I apologize, you guys, the times have been all over the place. Normally, um, we would do these at eight or nine at night. Um, but because there was interest in the UK, 
in participating in the sew along too. That would have made it one in the morning for them. So we decided on 3 p.m. Um, and so let me know how you like it. Yes, it was going to originally be nine because that's sort of when our Wednesday nights used so to be. Jenny's not imagining things. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're not going crazy. It's us who is crazy and changing things all the time. And you know what I mean? Everything's been sort of up in the air, um, trying to accommodate all these different time zones and you know, but here's the great thing. This video will stay posted on the Facebook page. So if you decide to sew this up yourself, um, you can refer back to it whenever you want. All right, so I want you to match up layer up your two pieces of fabric here. You're not going to cut them both at the same time, are you? Really? And we'll cut them both at the same time. Whoa. Yeah. It's efficient and it ensures that your um your fronts will match the backs. And it's no problem for the rotary cutter to go through multiple layers. Okay. Now, Oop. If you don't have a rotary cutter, but you do have a Gemini machine, these squares, let me show you, I cut out a bunch. This is how many you can cut out at once using the square nesting dies, the fabric dies. So you can cut these out with your Gemini, just run it on through, fold up your, your yardage and run it on through and you can easily, easily cut them that way. So that's kind of cool. Your Gemini or your Gemini Junior. How many people got the Gemini? I haven't even gotten the Gemini Junior. Um, I'd be interested to know who's gotten it and whether they've tried it out. Um, I tried it at HSN and I thought it was a great little thing. So what's the difference between the Gemini and the Gemini Junior? Size. Oh. So it's basically like a mini Gemini. Um, it cuts exactly the same way, um, but it's like a six inch, six by nine inch platform. So you can use those smaller plates in your bigger machine if you turn them sideways, which is kind of cool. Or you've just got like a machine that's easier on the go, or you can leave out on your desk if you don't have that much space. And Colleen got it, she loves it. <laughs> that's good, awesome. I can't wait to get one. Dan, All right. Dan got it but can't find room in the craft room yet. Oh, come on. It's the junior. It takes up less space. We're going to just, here's what you do. Like this. <sighs> Shove like a big thing over. <laughs> That's how you make space. All right. See how I didn't even move these when I was cutting? I'm trying to keep everything lined up so I can maximize uh, the number of cuts I make. So I can just run along everything at the same time. And now I want to cut inside, you can see inside that teal border, that's your, that's your guide. See how it comes with that guide? Inside that teal border is where I'm cutting for these squares. So how many people are doing sewing projects for Christmas? Is anyone actually sewing anything up this year? I've been working on this reindeer um, quilt behind me, although it's not going to be a full reindeer. There are elves and wreaths and holly and a Santa face and all of that I'm determined will come and that it will not be sitting until 2020 before it's done. <laughs> Which is often the case. Because I feel like Christmas is one of those times, or any holiday really, that you're inspired, especially if you're you know prone to craftiness. You get really inspired around this time of year. The problem is some of those big projects, like a quilt, take like longer than the month between Thanksgiving and Christmas when you're actually inspired. So that's what's nice about like an advent calendar or a stocking or something like that. You can make this up, you know, in an hour or two. Okay, I'm just gonna... There's a few people doing some projects. Oh yeah? Like what? Oh, what did somebody say? I can't go back. Let's see... Somebody write in and tell us what you're making so Mike doesn't Place have Place mats into bags. Ooh. Yeah. That's a good idea. And then are you putting presents in those bags? Someone sewing stockings. That's good. We're going to be sewing up a stocking. Those ones there, which are kind of covered now. Um, next week, same time, same place. These come together in like 
very little time. So oh. those are great if you're a very, very beginner. Okay, so you can see I've got all but the last line cut Lots out here. Stockings, yeah. And you can see it doesn't take very long, but if you're more comfortable cutting with the Gemini, like 100%, you can, um, especially your back pieces, you can cut those really, really fast using the square die, the middle square of your nested dies. All right, I'm gonna store these yep, over there. Finishing the quilt. Oh, that's good. She started last year. I know, right? That's what happens with quilts, is that you're inspired during the holiday and then, you know? Okay, so here's what you wanna do when you're sewing these together. You can see our back Oops. pieces now perfectly match our front pieces. And so you're going to flip them so that they face each other, so that they're kissing, kind of right, it's called right sides together. That means the right side of the fabric is touching the right side of the back fabric. Hmm. And you're doing this because essentially you're gonna to wanna to turn it, eventually you're gonna sew it like this, and then you're gonna turn it right side out. And then that's how you get that perfect edge that we have over here. If we keep referring back to the, to the made one, it does help because then you can sort of see like, oh yeah, you can kind of deconstruct it backwards. Oh, someone wants to know where the materials from, they missed the beginning. So this, I had this kit on HSN at the end of September. And so um, I sewed it up live on the air there. And so you can imagine if you can sew it up in eight minutes, for sure you can get it done in an hour or so at home. So I had these on HSN. They're now on sale, I noticed, on hsn.com. Like I think 40% off or maybe even 50. So I thought, okay, a lot of people are gonna be beginners or maybe could use a little refresher. Why don't I um, get a couple of these kits and sew them up and we'll do sort of a big sew along before Christmas. And so that's what I've been doing. And if you follow me on this page, which I hope you all will, um, I've got an event called this Christmas so long and I'm gonna bring in the machine here and what we've been doing is I've been doing events all for the last couple of weeks here where I had a bunch of group classes they all got the kits and I taught the class and we sewed them all up and we've been posting pictures in there of everybody's advent calendars and so it's been really fun and so if you um, want to get a kit, I would visit hsn.com and get one while they're still there. I know they've put them up on sale, so someone let me know. If, hopefully I should have checked. <laughs> Imagine there's none left. Lizzie from the UK says hi. Oh, hi! Yeah, let me know if you're in from the UK because we did this earlier tonight for you guys so that you wouldn't have to be up at 1 in the morning. Okay, Mike, come on around here for just a minute yes, because I want to show you guys how I'm going to sew this up. So remember, I'm so I'm starting with number one. Start wherever you want, really. So these are going right sides together. And you'd be inclined to start it in the top corner. However, I'm going to say rotate it 180 degrees so that you're starting in the bottom corner. Because I want you to sew the top shut. Because remember, this whole piece is going to become the front pocket. This isn't the pocket here. This entire piece will be the pocket. So I'll do one full one and show you what I mean. And so then I'm saying they're not on sale. They're not on sale? How much are they? Nineteen ninety five. Yeah, that's the sale price. Oh. I think they were thirty nine ninety five before. Well, actually I don't know that for sure. But nineteen ninety five, that's pretty good. I think that I think that is a sale price. But nineteen ninety five. Okay. You would pay nineteen ninety five for an advent calendar or more that was cute anyway. I know, didn't uh, Madame Marielle put this in her classroom? That's right. So one of the people who sewed it up during one of our events um, was one of my kids' teachers. She came to it, and I picked them up from school just yesterday, and she had it already hanging in her classroom with um, little Kinder Surprise eggs in it that she put extra little treats in. So I thought that was an, a great idea. She, and she was so proud of herself, which, hey, why not? Okay, so you can see I sewed all the way around. And then what we're gonna do- That was easy. Yeah, is turn it right side out. But before we do that, 
because when we turn it right side out, we want it to have uh, cr nice crisp square corners. So I want you to trim like this. This is just gonna help get rid of some of the bulk in the corners. You don't need to trim all the way like around the seams. Just the corners will be enough to help get rid of some of that bulk so that you can end up with a nice crisp corner. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves and, and turning them up, but see, like, isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. Then you get a nice pocket and then we're gonna sew it on. So why don't I sew up a bunch of these and show you exactly how to make quick, quick work of it. So I'm starting in the bottom corner here and I am gonna backstitch. So that's just like three forward and a couple of back. So every sewing machine has a backstitch button and that just sort of locks in the stitch. Hi, Karen from Essex. Wow, there's people from everywhere. Hi, Miriam. And I'm just going right along here and I'm using kind of the shadow of, can you see? Yeah. How you can kind of see, I'm using that as my guide. So press your foot down. And now watch what I do when I come to the corner. This is gonna be critical. So I stop when I get to the corner and see my machine here will leave my needle in the down position, which is such a nice bonus. If yours doesn't, just put your needle down and then lift your presser foot, okay? And look, pivot. If you pivot like that, that's gonna give you a perfect square. And then backstitch at the end and then leave it and then take your next one start at the bottom corner and this is called chain piecing and quilters chain piece all the time because they're always doing multiple multiple so if you go a little far just go back one I, I did a couple too many stitches and I'm pivoting and see how my other one is still hooked here? See how it's chained together? Mm -hmm. I'm doing that just to save myself the time of stopping, snipping, and then replacing. Instead, I'm just adding them one by one by one and not and, and chain piecing them together. Pivot. And then, just cut them at the end. and then at the end, I'll snip them all at once. That's going to save me a lot of time because stopping and sniffing every single time takes far longer than if I just did it one time at the very end. And that's how you can make much quicker work out of something where you have to sew 25 of these um, all at once. Have you guys heard about chain piecing before? I'm a newbie. I had no idea. <laughs> I can't believe I've never told you about chain piecing. It's like thrilling when you learn about chain piecing. It saves you so much time. Well, it actually sounds pretty cool. Which is like, All right. As a word chain. Yeah, exactly. And then by the end, you'll have like, see what I mean? A big chain that you'll be ready to snip. All right, let me find where I put my little scissors. Juanita joined and Bob. Oh, hi, you guys. Where's my scissors, Mike? I know you took them. I did not. I know it was. Oh, you're there. It wasn't you. It was oh. me. <laughs> you know, old habits. <laughs> hey. So when you've got them all chained together here, then you can just make like it's very quick to just. And it won't come unthreaded. No, because we're this is going to get sewn into the actual um, project. We're still on our rough seams here. But this is a lot faster than stopping and starting and stopping and starting and stopping and starting. And now, I'm just gonna move this over again one more time. I also want you to make quick work out of trimming the corners too. Because that's what's arduous about sewing, especially with quilts, is like, if you do everything one at a time, you will literally be there until next Christmas. So I'm gonna stack these up. Maybe four. I'm just going to take my smaller ruler here. And remember I said I wanted you to trim the corners? So trim them all at once. Before you sew? Yeah. I already sewed these. Oh, sorry. 
Wasn't watching. Yeah, listen. Listen, you. <laughs> if you're not going to pay attention, why don't you go on upstairs? <laughs> no, I need you to stay and film this. But you know what I mean. So that's that's pretty helpful, like, to do that many at once. So let's do this same thing. And don't go too close to the thread. Um, because you don't want to inadvertently end up with a hole in it. But you really can get everything trimmed nice and quick if you take some of these shortcuts. I'm pushing it here with how many I'm stacking up. Mm. Oh, I forgot one. Or three. So, do some people are maybe trying this at home at the same time? or? Well, to be honest, I would be so, so proud if anyone was sewing this right away. But what I would suggest doing, I mean, if you are, put up your hand because I want to hear about it. Um, but if you're just inspired to make this at another time, the video is going to stay posted so you can watch it, you know, whenever you ha have the chance. Um, what did I do? I had a ruler. I know we took it. Right? Did you? What kind of ruler is this? Uh, where is it? Uh, anyway, you want to get some sort of pointed edge, and a ruler works really well. I'm going to come over here and see if I can find it. Oops, sorry. Okay, here it is. The ruler's clear, so I can't really find it. So I'm taking the end of this ruler. Any ruler will work. And they even have special tools you can buy, but a ruler works well too. And I'm just like sort of sticking it in the top before I iron these down just to help me get a super pointed corner. Because you know that it's a it's a right angle because you did that pivot. If you were trying to sew like, then no. But because you're doing the pivot, it'll help you get a nice crisp corner. And then of course we're gonna take these to the ironing board and flatten them right out. So some people are asking if you're gonna be doing paper crafts in the future again. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, in fact, I'm planning on the 20th for a regular time slot to do, um, I'm kind of thinking of doing like a paper house, like um, out of some of the new dyes, out of some of the new Sheena dyes, um, like a little Christmas village, kind of with a church and some houses. I've been thinking about it a lot and I'm like, I think I better do it. So cool. like I'm, I'm inspired to do it. So let me know if you think that's a good idea. Or if you just want to go right back to cards or scrapbook pages. Sarah Johnson says hi. Hi, Sarah. That's Sarah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's That's her. Me. And they want to know where you can find a rotary cutter. Oh, anywhere. Any craft store will have a rotary cutter. I can put, I can put a link up to the one that I... Well, I have lots of them, but you can find them anywhere. Use a coupon. Find it online. But I can put a link up if that helps you. Um, and But if you're getting a rotary cutter, you need to have a self-healing mat. Something like this. Um... Because, self yeah, it's self-healing. It means you can put this sharp, sharp blade into it and nothing happens. Yeah. Oh, she's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> so basically, you're going to want to turn all of these right side out. Sarah, Sarah said she's on holidays in Dubai. Oh, so good. So lucky. Oh gosh, I bet the weather is... Although I can't complain about the weather. We should really have 10 feet of snow by now. But it felt like spring yesterday, hey? Yeah, it it's coming beautiful. though. It's coming. Um, in case you're joining me for the first time, I am in Toronto, Canada. So lots of you who've been tuning in for a while will know about my Canadian blood. But if you're so these just... these are going to be ironed after? That's yes, iron? we're going to press them all. Um, because like I said, you know, sewing... Is 50% ironing. <laughs> and I don't it was 70 a while ago. It was 70 ago. a while ago, but you know. <laughs> it is. It's a lot of it's a lot of pressing. Um, but not the unfun kind of ironing like you know your husband's shirts or anything. Not that I would ever iron those. <laughs> not that that's ever happened. Well, one time I think I wanted you to look better once, and I was like, take that off and I'll iron it. Just that one time, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Dubai, that would be, 
That would be pretty amazing. So she just landed there. Oh, that's great. Well, I hope you guys have a marvelous time. Amanda Brooks is feeling inspired. So. Oh, good. You know what? A lot of um, a lot of sewing is just getting over the mental hurdle of using the machine. But look at it this way. I know I'm scared of the machine. <laughs> well, like millions of people, including me, wouldn't be able to do it if it was that hard. Right? Like, really. If it was that hard, I wouldn't be able to do it. You know this, right? You of all people in this room know. If I was... don't know how to answer that question. Yeah, well, you just keep smiling. I do know I've seen my daughter yeah. do it, so. Yeah, and like we have, and your son. Yes. They all will get down here. Like my oldest one can thread it for sure herself. The younger ones don't thread it, but they do sew right along. And there's so many videos online, including, we've got lots of videos online too. If you visit crafterscompanion.com or our YouTube channels, my YouTube channel, like there's tons and tons of videos to show you how to thread your machine and how to get out of virtually any bind that you end up in. And, you know, I haven't really taken any professional sewing classes or anything like that. I just... Figure it out? Yeah, you just sort of figure it out as you go. It does help to have a, to have a machine, and I want to say a semi-decent machine. Um, but even if you have an old machine that was like your mother-in-law's, or it's been sitting in the basement collecting dust since the beginning of time, like those old machines, I bet it still works. Those were like those are really good quality machines back in the day. Some of the ones that you find now at big box stores and stuff like that, I mean, they're still. Hey, I say, you know, a cheap sewing machine or an old sewing machine is better than no sewing machine because at least it gets you going. But you will find the more you do it, the more you'll enjoy some of the bells and whistles of like a computerized machine. Like this one, for example, um, I'll just I'll just talk to you a little bit about it while I'm ironing these. Um, this one, for example, you'll see like it has a computer lit screen. It tells you when you're on this stitch to use presser foot A and then all the presser feet are, you know, have a, a letter on them so you know exactly, you know, that you're doing the right thing. It also will automatically set the stitch length and width, like it'll be optimal for whatever stitch that you've chosen. So you're not, you know, trying to turn any knobs or fool around with anything like that. But that comes with a bit of a bigger price tag too. So if you're just starting out and you get um, a mechanic or you have a mechanic ma mechanical machine, you can still totally totally make any kind of project with it you can I would just I would liken it to a, a car it's like every car basically gets you except for my Dodge Daytona which I had in university uh, will get you from point A to point B which means it'll probably sew no matter like how expensive or how cheap however you can move up and, you know, get things like a sunroof or automatic, like, door locks and windows. That would be the equivalent to the automatic scissors where you just press it and the machine does the cutting so you don't have to snip the thread every time. You know, so there's those things when you kind of elevate yourself to the next level um, that makes sewing, like, a little more, makes it faster, for one. And, I don't know, maybe a little bit more fun because you don't have to fool around with a bunch of stuff that you don't. You know, you don't have to anymore. Okay, if you'll notice, what I've done is flattened all of these, and then the instructions that come in the kit will tell you to turn this inside out like this, and then then top stitch. Honestly, I tried it, and I just feel like it's an extra step, and I feel like you get the exact same result by just turning it up, and especially if you're just beginning, it's just as easy and just as clean to just press that tail up as it is to try to, you know, get it perfectly matched like this. Do you know what I mean? It's just more work to do it like that. And I didn't find that the effort or, or that the output looked all that much different considering the amount of work it took to get it perfectly inside like that. Well, I guess it wasn't that much work. <laughs> but it's still more work than just flipping it. And I feel like if you're just starting, just flipping it is just as good. 
Do you see what I mean? I do. Yeah. Okay, so now that we have these all basically... Well, Angelica from Brazil, or from Chile, sends you a kiss. Oh! <laughs> That's so nice. All right, so now we've basically got them all. I'm going to find, where did I put the actual, did it drop? I'm not sure what we're looking for. The base, oh, here it is. I'm all about the base. I'm more stacked up front than I am in the back. <laughs> oh, jeez. It's true. But I do like that song. I would, anyone who's like, you know, knows me and see me in person would, would say, yeah, your bass is not your strong suit. All right, I'm just giving this another, because now we're going to start assembling. So we probably want to try to get these in order. Don't something like the album, advent calendars have them all over the place? That's true, actually. Would you rather? Okay, what's the vote out there? Would you rather? What do you think? Should they go in order, or should they be totally random? I know the kids sort of like finding where's number one, where's number. You know what I mean? What do you guys think? Mike, you tell me what the yeah, consensus is. I know there's no consensus at all yet, but. Martha said she's got a machine with an automatic needle threader. And she's Ooh, so yes. So this is an automatic needle threader right here. It pulls down. You might not even know that your machine has it, but you just pull it down like this. And you wrap it around here and around here. And then gingerly lift it up. And it'll push the, the thread right through your needle for you. So if you're getting, you know, a little well, we're squinty. Getting... We're getting some for random, some for order. Ooh. Let's just do random because then random. It, it, it'll mean I don't have to like put Pay them attention. in order. <laughs> it's all the same. You decide what you're going to do. I'll do them randomly to save myself the time of putting them all in order. Well, Tamara's doing it random, she said. Oh, good. All she's right. She's doing it right now. Oh, Tamara, you're doing it right now. I'm not sure. I'm guessing. <laughs> all right. So, if you wanted to, you could pin these. Well, lots of randoms. Everyone likes random. All right, we'll do a random. We're starting with number five. Should I be better on the other side? Maybe. maybe. So, we're starting with number five. Oh, maybe I'll start with a different one because five is the same color as that. So, let's start with, look, 19. Well, Tamara is doing it right now. Oh, good. All right, so this is where you could, if your machine had a quarter inch foot, you could put the quarter inch foot on instead of your regular presser foot. Um, that would ensure a perfect quarter inch seam around the entire thing. Or you could do like a decorative stitch and do like a blanket. So it would just yeah, hug the outside all the way around? That's right, it'll hug the outside all the way around. Let me see if I have it here. So if your machine has a quarter inch foot, look at the difference, come on in. So I'll take this foot off. Just like that? Just like that. Yeah, I don't know anything about sewing. No, you don't. And then you just put it on. And now if you get in super close, you can see... Yeah. Oh, the camera's on the other side. You can see that there's that fence right there. Oh, won't let the fabric go past. And it won't let the fabric escape past. So that when I put the needle down, my stitch is going to stay right there. See what I mean? Amazing. So I could do that for this one and use the quarter inch foot. Actually pretty interesting. Well, it's very genius, really. And then if you see up here, the automatic scissors, like if you, it cuts the thread for you so you don't have to. That's just like the new computerized way of sewing. A lot of people who've been sewing for years will go, oh my gosh, I've been putting it through the knife or using my snips and... So I'm going to go a couple ahead and then I am going to be sure to backstitch here because this is where um, all the kids or your husband or whoever's putting their grubby little hands in these pockets, they're going to be after the treat and they're not going to be paying attention to making sure that they gingerly um, take care. So we want to make sure it's nice and knotted in there. And I'm going to do the exact same thing here that I did when I was sewing up 
the actual pocket, which is pivot. Oh, is it possible to sew your finger? Yes, Please. it's totally possible. If you put your finger up here and kept going, it would go right through your finger. Okay, okay. now I don't want to sew anymore. I know. Many, Colleen, if you're still on here, I think Colleen was in from Nova Scotia. She sent me a picture when she sewed through her finger. Oh my. Do I not. Did, I did see that picture. Yeah, do not post that, Colleen. That was pretty gruesome. And then go back, your back stitching again when you get to the other side. Okay, I'm just going to use the snips. What? And then now your pocket is on there very securely. I've just gone over the one edge. And there's no uh, batting in that, just on the back of the other There's side? no batting on the back of this. We're going to get to the batting soon enough. And in the pockets, there's no batting? No, there's no batting in the pockets. Huh. You could oh, if you, if you, if you wanted an extra be. step. But no, you don't need any. No. You've got the double-sided pocket so that no, you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. going to be nice and... Uh, clean. All right, let's do it one more. And... So here's another tip. I'm going to take the quarter inch off so that you can see here. When you're starting to sew, like see how I'm getting down here and see how my very first stitch is over like a double layer of fabric here. Like it's kind of a hump to get started. So when that happens, sometimes, no matter how good your sewing machine is, no matter how good you are, the machine will just get kind of tripped up because it's trying to take a big step right off the beginning. So you could start back down your pocket and then just go back, start going backwards to start. That way when you get to the beginning, it's already tacked down and then you can just go forward and it'll be nice and smooth. So that's just a tip if you're sewing over the hump and it's kind of tripping you up a bit. So remember to pivot. That way you get a nice square. And now this machine, you'll see I'm going like kind of slow. Um, it has a cruise control or speed adjustment, which means once I kind of get the hang of it, I can turn it up and really get going. You know what I mean? But if you're just starting out, or you can, you know, you can really go fast. Because I'd say by the time you get to pocket like 15, <laughs> you're going to have this down. And that's what's really great about this project for beginners is that there are a lot of steps. However, there are repetitive steps. So you really get the hang out of, you know, doing right sides out. You really get the hang of pivoting. You really get the hang of back stitching and attaching. And, um, and that's, that's really, really, you know, you're learning a lot of lessons in this one project because it's so repetitive. So even really, I shouldn't go that fast. Not that <laughs> even I, I mean, I'm not even that great of a sewer. Just remember back stitch when you get to the top. And you can see it coming along. Yeah. Yeah. So you'll go through this and so I'll do one more and then I'm going to get to how you sandwich it. Um, because that's a major step in this project. And once you've seen these sewn on, you know, once or twice, it's, it's the same for all 25. So I won't make you sit through sewing on 25 of these, even though I, I will finish this, but I have one that's halfway. Just remember to pivot and you can see why turning it instead of sewing the bottom when we were doing the pocket was just as good. And don't sweat it if like, you know, look at this. This seam wasn't exactly like square. Um, don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world. No one's even gonna notice. Okay, so once you've got to- about the fun of the project? Yeah, 
And, and really, when it's done and all put together, you're never going to be able to tell that one piece was off by, you know what I mean, a little bit. Mm. Me and Marjorie, Marjorie, from, Marjorie? Marjorie from Hawaii said she bought some um, cutting fabric dyes for the Gemini and she wants to see a quilt that you made with one. Ooh! Awesome. Well, I can tell you. I have a, where do I have that quilt? I can post a picture or there is a picture on my Instagram of a big um, hexi quilt that um, my friend Crystal made. There's another quilt that's all, I'll, I'll post some on my Instagram because they're packed in the trunk that we just had at the quilt market, which I of course have not unpacked yet. Um, <laughs> but there's tons of quilts you can make with those. Let me finish this first and then I'll post some of those. Okay, so you've got the rest, uh, the other half of your backing fabric. So that's going to go down. I'm going to use this one since I already ironed it. Well, maybe not that well. I'll give it a quick press. Penny Cunningham joined. Oh, hi, Penny. Penny is on the Threaders design team, so she helps make tons of sewing samples um, for when we have stuff on HSN. She does a lot of the paper crafting too, so. Post your uh, your blog and your or your website, Penny, so people can check you out. Okay. So now I'm gonna make sure this is right sides down. I'm gonna take the batting that came with the with the kit, put it down, and then line up all my finished squares that are sewn on here. People wanna know how you like the iron, by the way. I like the iron. Um, I like that the no cord is actually quite good. Um, the one thing I will say about it is that you have to put it back on the base or it um, starts cooling down. But, I mean, you never really have it off the base for that that long anyway. I'm just going to take this piece of batting. I cut that one too small. So yeah, this iron has been good. I, I like the... I like the no cord. I didn't think it would make a difference, but it actually does. Like it's really not in the way at all. Like, or like you, you don't really notice how much it was in the way before. Okay. So because all of the sides are touching here, I'm going to use my cutting mat ruler and, or my cutting mat and my rotary cutter again. And this is how I'm going to make sure that the top and the bottom are perfectly lined up. So right on the edge of the blue, look at a nice, now it's like perfectly mm -hmm. even. You're going to do that all the way around? And I'm going to do that all the way around. You're stealing my thunder. That was the big reveal. I'm going to do it all the way around. Sorry. I'm just kidding. And doing it this way just ensures that your front, your back, and your middle all line up. So someone missed it. She said she missed a thing earlier. The instructions will be posted online? Yes, I'll post the instructions. Or you can buy this kit if you're interested in, um, you know, having all of these pockets and being able to cut them out in this pattern. It's on hsn.com. I had these on um, HSN at the end of September. Uh, or, yeah, was it the end of September or beginning of October? And someone just looked and they're $19.99, $19.95 on hsn.com right now. So you can get it. It takes, I'd say probably two hours if you're a beginner to, to make, maybe a little bit longer. And this video will stay posted so you can watch the step by step. But there are instructions that come with it. I'll post the instructions on my page after this too. All right, so this part's kind of critical. 
I'm gonna unsandwich the back, but I'm leaving the batting here. And then again, just like we did with the pockets, right sides together, okay? And now at this point, this is where, if you want this to be a hanging advent calendar, so for example, see how this has this hook that I can hang it up? I, put, I attach these pom-poms to it, but which I think are super cute. Um, if you want this to hang up, I would actually suggest putting a hook here the two, yeah. and here. That's going to be better. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that because that's not in the instructions, um, but it's super, super easy. So take a couple, whatever, you know, scraps you have, you'll end up with tons of like that you've just cut off. So take a scrap and just measure maybe two inches. Doesn't have to be perfect. Two inches by like, let's say six inches. And then with your iron, Fold it in the other thing about that iron is that it shuts off if you haven't used it in a few minutes so every once in a while I'll go back to it and it'll be off which is probably you know saving this house from burning down like many times <laughs> <laughs> but then you do have to turn it back on so that is my review on this iron And so see how I'm getting like a nice seam here. If you didn't want to see the stitching, then you could turn it right side out, but I'm just kind of making quick work of it here. And then I'm going to stitch all Oops, along. Sorry. I'm going to stitch, that. sorry. I'm going to stitch all just along here in one uh, row. Here, I'll do it just like this so you can see. Sideways stitching. How do you like that, you guys? Impressive. <laughs> See? It's easy to get. All right. It's not straight, but whatever. Um, and then just cut it in half. And then you'll just have two hooks, basically. Just easy. And honestly, this applies for anything that you might want to hang. I'll leave this over here because I'm sure I'll need it again. But the trick to getting them to hang nicely is that you need to do it at this stage. I'm going to put them and have them face down. And this is where I'm going to use a pin. I hardly ever use pins anymore. Just because it like, feels like an extra step. But I'm sure it would save me a lot of crooked seams if I would pin more often. But I am going to pin this here so it stays. And then I'm going to pin the second one over top of the first square so it stays. So, how come it's inside like that? It's inside like that because this is going to get turned right side out. And when it does, it'll, it'll be like that. Oh. So that's why that's important at this stage. And it won't be in the instructions, which is why, because you've watched this video, you are going to have such an advantage on anyone else who didn't watch <laughs> this video. <laughs> All right. And then we're just going to sew all the way around the entire perimeter except for about six inches on the bottom or six inches somewhere I just always seem to do the bottom because I assume people don't pay attention to the bottom but you want to make sure you take the corners and then I'm just gonna flag myself with a with a double pin here that's gonna say hey stop sewing here and backstitch because you're gonna leave this much space to turn your project right side out. And so is there batting somewhere? The batting is the batting is on the back still, oh, okay. remember? Obviously not. Yeah. <laughs> 
Wow. I knew it was somewhere. <laughs> you're you're really um, enthralled in the batting tonight. Like, where's that batting going? Is there any batting in that, those pockets? I know. The I batting know. is what's going to make it soft and cuddly. See, yeah. Uh... That's what's inside quilts, the batting. In the UK, they call it wadding. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So, again, you could use your quarter-inch foot. I... Um, I'm just going to use the edge of my presser foot here as the guide. I'm just going to sew it all the way around. And I'm not going to run over my pins. Instead, I can feel it get to the point where it's going to go over top of the little hook. So I'm going to pull that pin out and just go right on. Hear it working a little harder there to go over top of that hook. She might make a sewer out of the edge. <laughs> and my, Millie wants to know if you're going back to Tuesday night shows. It's going to be Wednesday. It's going to be Wednesdays. Um, probably, well, I mean, you guys let me know. Wednesdays, let me know if you like this time slot or if you like an 8 o'clock time slot or a 9 o'clock time slot. Um, because Eastern. We've been, Eastern. We've been sort of debating... Um, what would be the best uh, time to have them? Um, I have little kids and they have tons of activities and they also need to go to bed And so there's life to consider apart from just crafts. I know it's a tough one um, So Wednesdays are the night that we don't have anything else going on so Wednesdays would be good for me if it's good for you and I don't know. I don't know about the 3 p.m. I like that the people in the UK can watch, like that's nice, um, but we're keeping an eye on the clock because the bus will be coming in about a half an hour, so we have to watch for that, and the kids, because the kids aren't home from school yet, that's why this is, this has been made possible by the <laughs> school district of, <laughs> alright, I'm getting to the double pins, why don't you yeah, come on in, I'm getting to the double pins, so I'm just going to back stitch. Some people like this time slot. So. Oh yeah, okay. So I'm gonna back stitch a bit here and then make sure I don't run over them. And then I'm just going to snip. And then bring it to my next set of double pins. Because remember, I'm leaving that space back here. That's gonna be where I turn it in right side out. Oh, I should have back I should have backstitched there. I'll just go back all the way. No big deal. See if you forget, it's not the end of the world, just... It's not like we're stitching someone up on the operating table here, it's just a, an advent calendar. Doesn't have to be perfect. Marlene loves your sewing videos. Oh, that's so nice! Well, I love doing them, so if you love watching them, I'll keep making them. So I'm all the way around to the other side, back stitching, snipping, and now it's going to be, make sure I have no pins, the big reveal. Oh, so basically treat this like it's one big pocket. You can go around there. You can treat this like it's one big pocket. So remember with our little pockets, we trim, we trim the corners. Are you okay? You just stepped in something. Sorry. What is that Halloween candy? No, no. <laughs> Please don't step in the It's a power bar. Oh, okay. <laughs> Again, trim the corners just because that's going to help you get a crisper corner, even on this big one. Oops. Got it? And then. Are you cutting another corner or just one? I cut all four corners. How did I miss that? Well, you were over there doing a dance of some sort. <laughs> okay. And then. This is where it gets good. Sewing is one of those things where it all kind of seems to be undone and then suddenly it's finished. And this would be a good example of that. Because you're often working inside out, you know, you don't get a huge payoff until really at the very end. So again, you can take a ruler and just really get your corners nice and 
square. Because you did the pivoting, you should have nice square corners. Do it with your finger first and then get your ruler in there. See? And because you trimmed the corner, that's it, it just saves all the fabric from being like a big ball right there. Kate from the UK is watching, but she's in bed with a cold. Oh, poor Kate. Well, when she's feeling better, I hope she's inspired to sew. Although, you want to know what? I'll admit, I watch crafting videos constantly that just for the fun of it. <laughs> Mike's like asleep in bed, and I don't even put the earphones on anymore. I just let it, I just blast it out, eh? <laughs> That's why I sleep with earphones on. I know. <laughs> this is our life, huh? Oh well. Okay. Ready? Ta da! Ooh. Yeah, it's looking good, but I want you to pay attention here because it's still kind of puffy. It's still kind of like, yeah, I can see it. It still needs to be ironed again. Remember? And watch the difference between how good it looks before and then after you give it a press. Pressing down all those sides, and then I'm going to top stitch all the way around it. And top stitch just means putting a stitch through your finished work. And I'm going to do that to prevent it. What because, about the bottom? Sorry. Yeah, yeah we're going to do the bottom. Don't Sorry. worry. Sorry. Is someone asking that, or is that no, you? No, that's me. Well, can you just... <laughs> God. I'm just getting over there with the iron. So, we have our bottom, as Mike has lovingly pointed out. So the bottom we're going to take in, just like about a half inch like that, and press it down. And as I was mentioning about the top stitching, the top stitching that goes all the way around is going to seal that up. So it's another reason you want top stitching. But the top stitching is going to be great. Because over time, as you know, you reach for your candies and stuff, this will start to roll. If you put a layer of stitching along, it, everything's gonna stay nice and flat for good. So that's, that'll be the last of the sewing, is just this bit of top stitching now. Make sense? Yes. Make sense, Mr. Mike? Yes. Okay. Melissa and Judith just joined. Hi, Judith. All right. I think I'll top stitch it around, hmm, around the blue. Around the blue. Around the blue. Uh, just whatever. Careful of the iron. Oh, I can feel the heat. So you could also, if you wanted, take the chance to do some decorative stitches here, like, you know, do a snowflake or do something kind of fun. If your machine has that, this would be the chance to do that. You could also do the same on some of your pockets if you wanted to put some snowflakes or stars. Lots of machines these days have lots of cool um, decorative stitches. Totally. Like you could put like the year that you made it, like under the Happy Christmas one, put 2017. Oh, that'd be so cute. I should have done that. Is it too late? It's too late. Well, it's never too late. It's just too late for this, for our purposes right now. Okay. Um, but you could even do it with just embroidery thread. You don't have to machine embroider it at all. I don't think so. I should be the one teaching this class. Oh, really? Okay. She said it some way like that. All right, all right. Let's see what you got, Mike. Mike has picked up a thing or two about crafts. Sometimes he whips out terminology that I'm, you know, surprised he even knows. Osmosis. <laughs> what did you say the other day that I was like, how do you know that? <laughs> like, he said something like, oh, why don't we cut that on the Gemini? Or, uh, oh, that looks like it's been die cut. And I was like, who are you? Someone's saying a heat transfer vinyl would work. Oh yes, totally. If you cut it out on your uh, Cricut or if you cut it out with dies and then you could iron on or do something iron on in the back too. There's tons of ways you could go with it. 
And Kathy wants to know the machine, the iron, and what kind of mat we're using. <laughs> okay, let me get through this. I'll post links. How about I post? And I should say, if anyone is in can watching this in Canada and they want a good deal on one of these machines, one of the can these are the Canada 150 machines. Come around because they're so nice. Um, message me, like P like PM me after this. Because there is a total of 25 of these machines available um, that I can get you a good deal on. Uh, I think it'd be only open to Canadians, though. But isn't it nice with the maple leaf? And it's totally computerized. 100 stitches. But this would be the equivalent of a mod 100. Or, yeah, I think it's a... No. I'd have to look. I'll post a link to what what machine this is. Do you need to see in between the pockets? You do because you're going to put your little treats in there. So where's our Halloween candy? Let me find it. Remember, I confiscated. If you weren't, if you didn't join us at the beginning, oh here it is. Oh. Then you won't know that a couple weeks ago I confiscated what was left of the Halloween candy for this purpose and so yeah you you will want to see inside the pockets and make sure that they're nicely you know that that's why we line them and it just matches the back so it's just ever so slight but it's kind of cute right that machine's not available in the US right it is but oh, and I'll, it is and I'll post what it is it just it, if you want the the maple leaves and stuff on it um, I can post to where you can get it or if you're interested in this particular machine message me because I have a good um, I can get you a good deal on one of these machines that we used um, for a demo recently Janome lent me 25 of these machines and, and I moved them like 30 times yeah Mike Mike did all the heavy lifting um, he moved the machines but it also meant I opened 25 brand new machines and now they can't sell them because I opened them, which was very generous of them to allow me to open 25 new machines. So these machines are normally, I think, like something like close to 1200 bucks. And so they're going to sell them off at a very, very discounted price because they are open box. So if you're in Canada and you are wanting one of the Canada 150 machines, message me and I'll figure out a way to get you a good deal on one. But this is it. This is the advent calendar. Well, look at that. Sarah Tryon just joined. Oh, hi, Sarah. Everyone will remember Sarah from her filming days. Sarah's at home with sweet baby Harrison, who no doubt will be on the receiving end of some of these treats one day because she has one of these kits, and I know her and my mom are going to sew them up. So good luck to you. I expect your phone calls tonight. If anyone else has any questions, if they're sewing this or anything else and you just want to run something by me, please message me or find me on Facebook, find me on Instagram and you'll see um, I'm promising this little uh, Christmas quilt is going to come together before Christmas Eve. That is the plan. I might so, not see you then. Well, that'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys keep me honest, hold me to my word and I hope you will join me back here next Wednesday, same time on this Facebook page and we're going to sew up these cute Christmas stockings that match the advent calendar. So you could have sort of a whole theme um, that is totally, totally um, coordinated uh, this Christmas. That would be a first for us. Anyway, thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.